Hey, crafting besties. Y'all, this video may be long, but y'all hear me out. There's three important things that I need to tell you. First of all, I'm participating in this Southern Girl Cans Collaboween Celebration Playlist. And I'd appreciate it so much if you would subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And subscribe to her channel as well. And after you've watched my awesome video, please check the description box for a list of links to all the other participants' videos. It's going to be spooktacular. Oh wow, I said that right. <laughs> I tried like three times to say that. Anyways, second thing is the very first DIY is a brand new, as in brand new this year, and it's an adorable porch liner that I think you're going to love. And last of all, is if you don't watch the whole video, you won't see some of my favorite Halloween DIYs from years past, like the mummies, the candy container, the boo sign, the other hey boo sign. I mean, they're all super cute, so keep watching so you can enjoy them all. And give me a thumbs up, because that doesn't hurt either. <laughs> all right, y'all, let's get to crafting. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa, and this is Our Gray House. Kicking it off with this porch liner DIY that I made earlier this year for the summer season. It's super cute, but the back was a blank canvas and I had just the idea of what I wanted to put there. Here's the back side of the Oh Hello with the Bumblebee porch liner that I had made on my channel. I can link it up in the, you know, little corner thing. Anyways, so I'm going to do the back of it. What I had to do before we did that was reinforce it with another block here because it was coming apart this these boards are warped and they weren't they weren't like really that great boards to work with but you know what i like to use scrap wood and i like to use things that may otherwise be tossed out or not really put to good use so that's what i'm working with and then i'm going to show you how i get started for the harvest moon at the top because that's what it's supposed to be i'm going to use waverly chalk paint in the color maize pumpkin and crimson just make sure you have a little container of water to help you thin out and blend the colors but I start off by putting a circle of the maize color in the center and then around that I put the pumpkin color and finally the crimson color and then you're just gonna blend 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 and blend some more and I go in a circular pattern because I'm trying to make that you know I don't know like a moon <laughs> and then I just keep blending and swirling until I like how it looks and that's what you do too just do it until you like how it looks I did sketch on a cat and a ghost shape as well as the shape of some pumpkins towards the bottom of this leaner. You can't see it that well, but it's there, I promise. And I'm not that great of a painter, so I'm not able to freehand it, but you can, you can kind of see where the lines are. Yeah, you can kind of see where the lines are. And basically at this point, it's just coloring things in. And so for the ghost, I'm using folk art paint in the color plaster. And like I said, it's just filling the lines or not filling the lines, like coloring in side the lines. <laughs> and then for the sky and background area, I used a couple different colors of purple. I tried to blend them, but I didn't want just like a one flat color. So I tried. And for the cat, I used black. And again, since I sketched out the design, it's really just painting it on, kind of like a paint by numbers thing, you know, like fill in the blank with the color. And for the Pumpkins, I pulled out almost all of the orange paint that I had, and I painted each one a different color. And some of the colors are harder to tell apart, but I knew it was going to go back and add detail later, so I didn't really worry about it. I just didn't want the paint pumpkins to be, like, all exactly alike. And for the bottom section, I painted on a coat of maize paint first. And then I took several light brownish colors, and I just poured some out randomly on the, along the bottom in lines going up and down and then I took a small fan brush and went from top to bottom pulling the colors together but not overly blending but giving it some you know some blending <laughs> and this is how it looked when it was done I was trying to make it look like hay or something like that and now to add the details I used a brown white and black paint pen I added lines and dots and I didn't want the pumpkins I wanted it to look like a pumpkin patch and so like you could tell it was different pumpkins and not just an orange blob. If you like talking about crafts or sharing about the projects that you're working on, then you need to join my Facebook crafting group called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. I've got a link to it down below. All right, y'all, here's how it looks. I added this little boo, little word. I just put it on with painter's tape because I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave it or not. So. This is the little cat and the ghost. He's kind of got his arm around him. And then the little, the pumpkins that I made. 
but I just tried to make that look like straw or grass or something. Excuse the mess of my garage. But anyways, for the Harvest Moon part, again, it's just a combination of that crimson color, maize, and pumpkin. And I just kind of swirled them around till I like how it looked. Then I used a couple different shades of purple, kind of like a light purple. But then at the end, I'll have to get the color, but I took a large sponge brush that I got from, or sponge dauber that I got from Dollar Tree and put white in the middle and then purple around it and just made these little circles like that. And the boo, I just painted lime, lime sherbet, I think. And my little ghost painted him, added some details with the little lines and the dashes. And that's my little cat. And here's the pumpkins. I did add a lot more detail to the pumpkins. Just some dots and dashes and things like that to kind of help them stand out and separate them from each other. I think they turned out really, really cute and I really like it. This is my favorite project from today's DIYs and I'm gonna show you an alternative way to make it if you don't have a jigsaw. Start off by giving this a base coat of some white paint. And I'm going to link to the Etsy shop that I saw this in. And I, I guess this video could have been called Etsy inspired Halloween projects. But to add some dimension to the mummies, I was going to add some layers of cheesecloth, but I couldn't find mine. And I'm not sure if I gave it away when I cleaned out my craft room or what, but I didn't have it, couldn't find it. And it wasn't at my local Dollar Tree. So I'm doing what I think the Etsy inspo piece did and using craft sticks, popsicle sticks to create the mummy wrappings. Also, I kind of made this harder than it needed to be. I should have measured and cut out all the pieces and kind of marked where they go instead of doing them one by one. It just would have made everything a lot easier and I guess made the project faster, in my opinion. I'm going to glue the pieces on, but then for some reason I felt I needed to go ahead and paint on the black face part right then. This thought it could have been done at the end, but here we are. I just feel like if I'd measured, marked, and cut the sticks all at once, it would have been just an easier process. But again, this is, I don't know why I'm doing it this way. <laughs> it could have been done easier. Now on the popsicle sticks, AKA the mummy wrappings, I've taken some gray paint and then later I'm going to also take a light yellow paint and I add water to it and I'm just trying to add some different layers of colors to the mummy wrappings and I'm just hoping that it adds dimension to the piece and makes it look, you know, old and musty, I guess. This is how they are looking so far. And then I take some of Jim Holtz Distressing Ink and I want to kind of darken and dirty up these mummies. I mean, for crying out loud, these can't look brand new or anything like that. I also take a bright green paint and I use the end of the paintbrush, the pointy end, and I dip it in the paint and then I dot it onto the black face area to create the eyes. And I have some glow in the dark paint. And I add that to the eyes and the mummy wrappings. Now. I've never actually tested this out to see if it actually works, but I think it sounds cool in theory. <laughs> so that's why I put it on there. So I'm putting this one under here. I'll leave it under here for just a few minutes because it really doesn't take that long and we'll see if it works. Okay, y'all, we're trying this one again. Well, I mean, <laughs> I probably should have added more, I guess, glow in the dark paint. Can you, you can barely see it. I start off this project with a round circle that I got from BB Crafts, and I'll leave a link in the description box below. I spray painted it with Rust-Oleum's Chalk Ultra Matte Paint in the color Charcoal. And I found this Boo Wood Cutout sign at Dollar Tree, as well as this Wood Ghost Shape. And I'm gonna be using the Ghost Shape in another project, and I didn't have any extra, so I'm just tracing around it so I can paint it later. You can faintly see my pencil marks, so I'm going to take a paint marker and outline for the ghost shape. I started painting and I was going to leave the eyes and the mouth, but I decided to paint over them and just fill in the entire shape. And I had a little too much paint on the ghost, so I used the excess to paint that boo wood piece. And I took a fine point paint pen and I started outlining the words with lines and dots to help it stand out more. And yeah, I, you can hear the trucks and the traffic going by my house. Hmm. 
for the top of the sign, I needed a bow, so I found this ribbon from Dollar Tree and cut out three pieces. I cut out two 12 inch pieces and one 10 inch piece. You can adjust the length of the pieces to fit the size bow you're trying to make, um, but you just take the smallest piece and glue it together like a circle, and then you take one of the larger pieces and you glue it together like a circle, and then you take the smaller circle and put it on top of the larger circle and kind of flatten them out a little bit. You can secure it with um, like a dab of hot glue if you like. Now comes the putting the, go the bow together part, and you're gonna need either like a pipe cleaner, a zip tie, or a piece of wire to do this. And I take the flattened circles that I just glued together and I fold them kind of accordion style. And then I, I hold on to that and I take the remaining 12 inch piece of ribbon and try to pinch it up kind of like an accordion. And then I put it under the other two ribbons. And then I grab that pipe cleaner and I put the pipe cleaner on um, you'll see I kind of wrap it around and then I start twisting it and you know twisting it together but do it like on the bottom or whatever is going to be like the back of the bow. To hang this sign I'm just going to use some hot glue and jute twine and glue the jute twine to the back and I cover it with masking tape because I see Holly from Hot Humble Pie do it and she says it helps it hold it better so that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> I fluffed out the bow a little bit and then I just attach it to the top of my little sign with some hot glue. I wanted a wreath for my front door that could oh, easily be changed out for the seasons and the holidays and I didn't want it to be like, I didn't want to have to store like 20 wreaths. <laughs> so I went to Hobby Lobby and found a grapevine wreath and I didn't realize how inexpensive they were and it was only like eight bucks. And my only complaint is, and it's not really a complaint, but more of an observation, is that this wreath sheds a lot and it doesn't feel like the sturdiest of wreaths. But it was only eight bucks and it's working well so far. And for this project, I'm just hanging the sign from the wreath hanger so it's even easier to change out. And I think I'm gonna try to add some ghosts to it, like around the wreath, because I think that would look cute too. Hey Boo is my next project, and again, ridiculously easy. I just took this piece of wood that I got on clearance from Hobby Lobby, and I drew out a ghost shape on cardboard, and I cut out two of those shapes, and I glued them together. As you can see, I painted the wood black with Rust-Oleum's Chalked Ultra Matte Paint in the color charcoal, and I'm covering the cardboard ghost shape with spackle because I wanted to give it a different texture and I wanted to smooth out the edges of the cardboard. I tell y'all all the time that you do not need a Cricut to create cute things. I could have used my Cricut for this project, but I decided to freehand it. I like the subtle texture that the spackle gave the ghost and now I'm just making sure the ghost is where I want it and then I'm going to put it in place with hot glue. And I'm just distressing the edges of the ghost to add some more dimension to it. To finish this little guy off, I'm adding some distressing ink where his eyes and mouth will be for a shadow effect, and then I'm gonna go in with a paint pen to define it. And this is how this little guy turned out, y'all. Seriously, I just think he is adorable. The final two projects are so stinking easy. I bought two one by sixes from Lowe's and had them cut them down for me. And I spray painted this set with Rust-Oleum's Chalked Ultra Matte Paint in the color charcoal. And now I'm just taking a sponge brush, kind of like a stenciling brush thing, and I'm dipping it in some white craft paint, and then I'm gonna use it to make the eyes. Just kind of like dabbing and circling around a little bit. Anyway, you see what I'm doing. I just repeat the process for the other two boards. And I go in with a smaller sponge brush and some black craft paint to create the pupils. The other set I painted with Rust-Oleum's Chalk Ultra Matte Paint in the color Linen, and I'm using black craft paint and that same sponge applicator to make the eyes. I use a paint pen to create the mouths. And I fill that in with the same 
black craft paint I used for the eyes. And I just repeat the process for the other two boards. And if I didn't mention it, I was making a set of cats, or I made a set of cats, and a set of ghosts, and I love how they turned out. The only thing that I would change would be to make the tallest one a little shorter and the shortest one a little taller to look a little more balanced. But I love how they turned out. Project number four is a candy corn, candy inspired, terracotta pot. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just taping off the middle section because the top rim is going to be white, the bottom is going to be yellow, and the middle is going to be the terracotta color. And so I'm just using the painter's tape to kind of mark it off to help me have semi straight lines or kind of straight ish lines. We'll see how it goes. I'm starting off by painting the rims of each of the terracotta pots white. And I believe I got these terracotta pots from the Dollar Tree in the spring. And if I remember correctly, it was three for a dollar. So this project is gonna be very inexpensive. I already had the paint, I already had the painter's tape, all that kind of stuff on hand. And the next step is to paint all of the bottom third of this terracotta pot yellow and I knew the line wasn't going to be perfectly crisp and I was okay with that. It's time to peel back that tape and see if our efforts, our painting efforts paid off or not. I think it looks okay, but the terracotta color is just a little bit too dark. I think it needs to be more orange. So I'm going to go in with a much brighter orange and try to carefully go in that middle layer and paint all the way around. Now I'm just filling up some little bags with candy corn and then putting that in the little pot and I'm trying to decide which ribbon to use. I end up using jute twine to finish it out. This is how it turned out, and I think it turned out super cute, and I, I just love it. I think it would make a really cute gift for like maybe a teacher or your coworkers or something like that. Just really simple and easy to make. Now the total for the project, the pots were a dollar for three of them, and I already had the candy and the other stuff, but if you included that, maybe two or three dollars, something like that, but definitely under five. For DIY number two, you will need a wood round, and you can usually find these at Dollar Tree, and I know they sell them on Amazon as well. And I'm using Rust-Oleum's Chalked Ultramat Paint in the color charcoal to give this a coat on the front and back. I got this wood word cut out at Dollar Tree, and I'm painting it with Waverly Chalk Paint in the color plaster. And next, I'm taking a purple paint pen, and I'm outlining the words so that it pops and has more dimension, and also you can read the word better. And do y'all remember in the other video when I used glow in the dark paint on those mummies and like you could barely see it? Well, this time I'm adding a generous coat to this wood word. And I'm using ping pong balls and um, some golf balls to make this project, but you could also use something like this that you can find at Dollar Tree. I glued down the wood word boo to the middle of the wood round using hot glue. I found these ping pong balls at Dollar Tree last year and I've been looking around for them and haven't found them anywhere lately so I had to supplement with golf balls also from the Dollar Tree and also I haven't found any of those lately either. And I put a dab of glue down and then press the golf ball down. And I started with golf balls since I had less of them to work with and I was trying to be a bit random like with the placement. I didn't want them to look like perfect or anything like that. And after I'd used all the golf balls and then I started with the ping pong balls, y'all, I knew I was going to want more, but for the life of me, I could not find them in any Dollar Tree that I went to. And I went to a bunch and I ended up using or buying a small pack from Amazon. And I found these googly eyes in the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. And y'all, I hot glued on each of these googly eyes, one by one, one by one. And it took forever. <laughs> and then when I was done gluing them all down, I thought they kind of look like, you know, like... I mean, y'all look at it, <laughs> you tell me what you think they look like. But I was just like, uh-uh, this, this is not going to work. So 
I couldn't leave them just like that and my sister suggested adding more googly eyes on kind of like the monster ink eyes type thing. Okay, I'm not even sure if this is gonna make sense because I'm adding this in late, but I just found this footage. So I have obviously added some um, eyes to it. I think I talk about this in the reveal. Anyway, I added some eyes to it and I'm adding some floors that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm not a designer in this area. My bow is eh. I need to work on my bow making skills, but I'm just adding in the floral pick that I found at Dollar Tree and just trying to make it look like a wreath. So, you know, sometimes like some of my crafts I think turn out just like so great. And then some of them I'm kind of like, okay, yeah, I don't know about that. Anyway, I found this footage and I thought I'd add it in. And that's what I did. And this is how it turned out. So I added a bunch more eyes to it. Almost looks polka dot-ish, but that's okay. I added some florals from Dollar Tree and those, those black flowers actually had eyes in them too. So it kind of looks like the eyes of the, the wreath. I don't know, um, but I think it turned out cute overall and it doesn't look like, you know, <laughs> how it looked before. I think it looks more spooky. I got these three or two of these from Goodwill and I actually got them for a dollar. They were marked like two bucks, but she gave them to me for a dollar each. And I got the other one at Dollar Tree for $1.25. And so I've just taken off the stickers and I'm spray painting with Rust-Oleum Chalked Ultramatte Spray Paint in the color charcoal. Just kind of giving it once over. This is my spray tint. I don't have spray tint. I am making crystal balls. And so I'm taking this, I guess it's a, a document envelope or something. And I cut out four inch circles and I left like a little tongue to them or a little tab. I guess you could call it a tab, little tab to them because this is going to go inside the crystal ball. And this will all make sense in just a minute, but I cut out several because I wanted to practice with one of them and not ruin them, you know, from the get go. Now I'm painting this little thing, this little riser black. I really wish I'd had, um, this was higher, but it's not. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The crystal ball is actually a glass ornament that I got from Hobby Lobby. Dollar Tree didn't have theirs in stock. And so, you know, I had to work with what I had. I'm taking that clear plastic and I'm taking a rub on transfer and I'm rubbing it onto the circle part of the, the plastic. And what I'm going to do is roll it up and put it inside the crystal ball. And then it's going to look like something's floating inside or like you're seeing a vision of something inside. But the, First circle I make was like four inches wide because the, the ornament's four inches wide. You don't need it that wide. So I cut it down and I cut it down until I felt like I got the right size. And then you, um, oh, I needed to paint the little end of the ornament where you see me painting it because you could see it when you put it inside the, um, the candlesticks. So I painted those blocks so they would blend in better. And then you roll up that little thing that you made. You leave that little tab sticking out. And then, then you, you're gonna see in just a minute. It turns out actually pretty good. There was one that you can kind of see that it's got something inside of it, but the ghost one really turns out pretty good, I think. And so I hot glue the tab down, and then I just cut off the extra tab so that it'll sit inside that candlestick really nicely. And then to put it all together, I just take my hot glue and I put some hot glue either around the little base of the ornament or I put some inside the candlestick holder or I do both. <laughs> and then I just press it down, hold it for a few seconds and it's good to go. And this is how one of them turned out. See, it turned out really pretty good. Now the three of them together, the light, you couldn't really see it, but they turned out cute. I was near a Goodwill one day and I thought, let me just stop in and see what they have. Now, normally I don't find that much that I want, but on this particular day, I stumbled across these clay terracotta pots. They were only 77 cents each and I immediately knew what I was going to use them for. They also had these saucers and I was tempted to get those, but y'all, I'm trying to not increase my stash. So I left them there for someone else to enjoy. Now you can sometimes find similar pots at Dollar Tree and Lowe's and you know, stores like that. And they come in various sizes, but also Hobby Lobby carries a wide variety of shapes and sizes as well, but they're more than 77 cents. But at least you have some options if you're wanting to re recreate one of today's DIYs. I'll do a full reveal at the end, but you're pretty much going to get the general idea as we go along. 
The pots that I'm using are clay and they are going to soak up paint. And you could put a base coat on first to help with the coverage or do like I did and just paint on a couple of coats. And I'm just sketching on a pumpkin face with a pencil. And you know, I may not be the best when it comes to pumpkin faces, but it turns out just fine. I'm using Rust-Oleum's Chalk Ultramatte Paint in the color charcoal for this video. And I'm using a detailed brush to fill in the face that I just sketched out. Now in hindsight, it would have been way easier to use a paint pen, but I don't know why I didn't think of that. <laughs> DIY number five finds us painting this pot green. I've got Captain's assistance, as you can tell. He's just lounging there on my craft table. So again, this is kind of a repeater thing. You're painting the pots the color that you want them to be, and this one's gonna be green. Can you guess what I'm making? I did sketch on the hairline of this next character that I'm making, and I'm just using a little pencil, and then I'm taking a, you know, again, another, <laughs> I'm just like repeat, just another um, fine paintbrush, fine tipped, small tipped, I don't fine tipped paintbrush, and I'm painting in the hairline, just kind of going all the way around. Fun fact, I messed up when it came to the mouth part, and I wanted to repaint over it to redo it. Hang on, I'll show you in a second. As it turns out, I don't show you. Anyway, I had started to paint on the mouth a different way, and I decided I didn't like it, and I was gonna redo it. So I went to go get the paint and repaint over it, and then I couldn't remember <laughs> what paint I used. So then I'm trying to like find out the paint and I'm trying different color paints that I have. Y'all, it was a whole process. It was a whole thing. Ended up just repainting the pot and starting over. Now I'm just adding some eyes and I'm using that little um, dauber thing. It's not really a sponge. It's kind of a sponge, but it's not like the sponge one you get from Dollar Tree. Last one y'all, and I guess this video is gonna be short, sweet and to the point. <laughs> so this, Pot, I painted white and I kind of sketched on with a pencil just some lines trying to make the I mean you, you guys know what I'm making I think I'm making a mummy and so the little face area I painted black I painted the eye area green and now I'm taking just one of the colors I had just a dark color it doesn't matter what color you use and I've got Catherine's assistance here I'm just painting on where the mummy wrappings are and I'm not going all the way around because you're really only going to see the front and I just didn't feel like I needed to paint the back. So then I go back with another color, uh, um, brown, I think it's territorial beige or something. Anyway, just to kind of give it some dimension, but y'all, I didn't really like how that turned out. So then I took some white and a lighter gray color and now I'm just kind of going over those lines that I just took the time to paint. Don't ask me why. I don't know. I just thought I was going to create some like shadows and stuff and it just wasn't really turning out. So I painted over with kind of a mixture of the gray and the white, a little heavier on the white in most places. And I'm kind of covering up the lines. Maybe you can kind of see them through it. I don't know. So here is how my six clay pots turned out. And if I had to guess, you know what? I'm looking at this now and I forgot to glue the little bol bolts on the side of Frankenstein's, Ugh. Ugh, whatever. Okay, so here's the mummy. Here's how he turned out, or she, it could be she. I put a little white circle in there and I added a little black dot. Here's Frankenstein. I ended up making those eyes black with a little white dot in there. And again, I forgot to glue the bolts on the side. I have those in the garage. I'll do that later. Here's the jack-o'-lantern. And he turned out okay, you know, I mean, smile's a little lopsided, but it's okay. Here is the vampire. His, his like hairline looks a little, I don't know, doesn't, doesn't look right to me, but um, here's my little black cat. And last but not least, here's my little ghost clay pot. One thing I forgot to tell you guys is I run a Facebook crafting group, um, a crafting group on Facebook. It's called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description box below. I run that with my friend Sarah from Juju B DIY, who I'm hosting with today. I am blabbering. Here's how they turned out. I hope you loved them. I had some extra plywood left over on hand, but you can pick this up from any hardware store like Lowe's. 
I had already sketched and cut out the shape of the back of a farmhouse truck and I had seen tons and tons of ideas on Etsy and I saw one that I thought was super adorable and I wanted to make a similar one and mine is really similar. Well, <laughs> if I'm being honest, it's basically a dupe, but here's the inspo piece and I've got it linked below in case you want to check it out for yourself. I cut the shape out with my jigsaw and now I'm just sketching on where the back window is going to go and where the bumper will be and all that kind of stuff. Like I said, this project is basically a dupe of the inspo piece, but mine does have some differences. Anyways, I sketched out a cat shape and a ghost shape and I cut those out of a cereal box and some other thin cardboard that I had on hand. And I also cut out some pumpkin shapes and I paint the pumpkins with Waverly chalk paint in the color. You guessed it. Pumpkin. It's a really pretty orange and I like it. I painted the cat black and I guess I didn't show it, but I painted the ghost white. I know. Very original. <laughs> This piece here is like the tailgate and I'm painting it with Waverly folk art or maybe it's folk art chalk paint in the color elephant gray. And I do go back later and add some other colors to give it more depth, but I'll show you that in a bit. And the truck is going to be black and I just try to paint the parts that need painting. So like when I go back to paint the windows and the side mirrors and stuff, I don't have to go back over that 87 times to cover up the black. I mean, if you know, you know, it's just hard to cover black sometimes. And I chose to paint the rear and the side windows white and I added a bit of Parisian gray to give it some dimension. And for the bumper, I'm going to paint that with Parisian gray as well. And like the other areas, I go back later and add some other colors to make it not look just like flat paint. You know what I mean? Like, just like, oh, just one color. <laughs> I take two wood circles and I paint them white, but I also add some gray to it and I use a silver paint pen to highlight it around the edges. These are going to be my tail lights. And I didn't show this on camera, but after looking at the inspo piece, I go back and paint them red so that they pop and add another color to the color palette. I take some Jim Holtz distressing ink and go around the outside of all the little cardboard pieces that I cut out. I then attempt to make the pumpkin. What do you call it? Like the ridges. Okay. Hang on. I just had to pause on this so I could go Google it. And the indented ridges running from the top to bottom are called ribs. Now, you know, <laughs> so I was trying for a much thinner line and I don't always know which brush is the best brush to use. So I just go with what my heart tells me to use. And that's uh, the one I think that'll work anyway. The lines turned out thicker than I wanted, but I'll try to fix that later. And I don't have any shading stuff like my friend Monica from Up All Night DIY uses. Her stuff always turns out so cool. So I'm just taking some different colors of orange to add some interest and depth and dimension. Keep in mind, I don't really know <laughs> what I'm doing. I am using black paint and I outline the ghost and add some eyes and a mouth. And I use some Parisian gray to add some folds in the ghost. Um, what do you call it? What he's wearing? Like not a robe, I guess maybe a robe, a garment, the ghost garment. I don't, I don't know what to call that either. And I use a sponge dauber to add some yellow and black to create the eyes for the cat. And of course the cat needs a nose and some whiskers. So I use elephant gray to add those. And I used a white paint pen to add some highlights to the pumpkins. And I'm just following some of the pumpkin ribs. <laughs> That's the new term we learned pumpkin ribs. Anyway, I didn't know that before. I then took a green paint pen and added some tendrils to the stem of the pumpkin. And I used elephant again to define the cat's ears. And the bumper was Parisian gray and that just seemed like too light for the overall look. Like, so I used some elephant gray to darken it up a bit. I did use some water to kind of thin it out. I was trying for just like not one solid color, like multicolored, I guess. I don't know. And I used a white paint pen to add the treads of the tire, just the little V's. And then I used a thinner white paint pen to draw a vertical line like through the V's. <laughs> now that I'm saying V's, you know, that V lady on TikTok, and it was another great day of saving the V's or the V's in our case, using the same white paint pen. I outlined the truck and I just make some lines and little dots. You know, just kind of going around, just kind of however it feels good. I used wood glue that I got from Dollar Tree and glued on the wood circles that I'm using for the taillights. I did one side and now I'll glue on the other one. And now it's time to glue down the ghost cat and all the pumpkins. And I'm using that wood glue from Dollar Tree. And once I glue something down, I do use a container of paint to, to keep the cardboard from curling up and making sure that it all stays down and glued. Gluing down the cat. She turned out pretty cute, y'all. 
I mean, look at her. She's cute. Starting on the pumpkins, again, gluing down and putting something heavy on top. I just used all my paint cans. And I put down those front pumpkins and looking at them, I think, you know, I fixed those lines pretty good. I mean, I thought they were too thick, but they turned out pretty cute, actually. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I mean, just looking at it here, I think it looks good. <laughs> but I like what I do. I like what I make, usually. I'm putting on that final pumpkin in place there on the left. And you'll see that on the left that I have like all of my paint containers holding everything down. But now it's time to focus on the bumper. And some of the designs I saw online, they had like a bow and some had fall florals and some were plain. But the inspo piece had a trick or treat, like little, the words trick or treat. And so I got some, I decided to use the word spooky. And I got these wood letters from the Dollar Tree and I'm just painting them purple. And I was going to do the whole ombre thing and get fancy, but I decided not to. Just painted them purple and I put them on some tape just to hold them down. And I glued down the letters on the tailgate using that same wood glue from Dollar Tree. And then I glued, see, it is a Cheerio cereal box. <laughs> it's not sponsored either. I glued it down in place and I almost glued it down upside down, but I fixed it and I added some paint cans on top to make sure that it all stayed down because I just wanted everything to stay in place and not like, you know, move around or anything like that. And I outlined the word spooky with my white paint pen to make the letters pop more. And for the license plate area, I'm using a Dollar Tree rub-on transfer. The space was too small, so I took my white paint and I made the area just a little bit bigger. And I also accidentally got some paint on the bumper, so I had to take more elephant paint and fix that. But it all comes, out, it all works out in the end, y'all. The paint is dry and I put on the rub-on transfer and it fits perfectly. This turned out so stinking adorable. I absolutely love it. The only thing that I don't like is that I can't put it outside on my porch. And that was going to be the original spot for this, but it's definitely not weatherproof. So it's going to go near one of my tear trays that I'm decorating for Halloween. And you'll see that in an upcoming video. But I just thank y'all so, so much for watching my video today. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And I just, I just love how it turned out. Look at that cat, y'all. And like, look at the ghosts. They're so freaking cute. And the pumpkins, I really like how they turned out after all. And as you can see, I did go back and paint um, the tail light red and the white highlight and the black highlight there. And yeah, the pumpkins turned out cute too. And I just love everything about this. And I think it turned out so awesome. The letters that spell spooky, that's all from the Dollar Tree. Aside from the plywood and the cardboard boxes that I used, this is all Dollar Tree stuff. So it's very, very budget friendly. It's so affordable. It's easy to make. And I made some mistakes along the way, but it still turned out super cute. I'm out here now and I'm trying to, I'm gonna be doing that viral TikTok. I say viral. It was all over my page. I don't even know who created it. And, and when I was Googling it, it's been around for years. And so what you do is you take a t-shirt, 100% cotton t-shirt, and then you take one of these wood cutouts. You can use any of the Halloween ones. I'm just using this Day of the Dead one. And you place it down. Now I did put a um, foam piece of foam, foam board under here. But um, yeah, you just do that. And we're, then we're going to spray it with <laughs> a combination of um, bleach and water. Half bleach, half water in a spray bottle. And then we just let it set. We'll see how it turns out. Now, when I first started doing this, um, I didn't have it on spray. I had it on the stream setting. And so anyway, that created some of these lines you see over here. But already, you see it changing colors. I hope it turns out. See, I feel like it's a little bit um, more spray on this side than this side. So I feel like I need to come in on this side a little bit. Try not to overdo it or get it on myself as much as I can. But it's already, can you see it changing color? Pretty cool. And I've seen people do it with and without a cardboard or foam board in the middle of it. They say to do that because that way it doesn't bleed through, but I kind of don't care if it bleeds through and I kind of want the back to be splattered as well. So I don't know if I'll do something to that later, but I'm gonna let it set out here for just a little bit and I'll come back and check on it in a minute. 
So the stencil is pretty much dry, so I'm going to peel it back. Not peel it back. I'm going to lift it off and see how it looks. Well, I mean, it doesn't look bad. Almost looks like there's a shadow there, though. I'm okay with that. I did do two shirts, and this is how the purple one turned out. And again, I had hoped that it would be, it would have bleached white. So it just kind of looks like, I don't know, kind of like a shadow. I'm not mad at it, but it's not my favorite. This is the other shirt that I did, and I do like it better because it did bleach white. I think I need to research kind of like how the bleach is going to affect the shirt color, just to see, so I kind of had a better expectation of how it would turn out. But anyway, I like how this one turned out. For this project, you just need to buy some plain white candles like these from Dollar Tree. And when I tell y'all that this is an easy project, I mean this is easy. Now, of course, you're going to need to remove the stickers and then take a black paint pen and draw on eyes. And there's one eye. And there's the other eye. And then you're going to draw on a mouth. and then color it in. And don't forget, you need to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit that bell for notifications so you'll be notified every time I share something new. And now you're just going to repeat the project process for however many candles you have. And that's it. There you have it. Ghost candles. These candles are super cute and super easy to make you're gonna probably wanna make a bunch. For this project, you're gonna need one of those little glass fishbowl kind of things. It's in the crafting area at Dollar Tree. You can also find them at Hobby Lobby, but at Hobby Lobby, they're $1.99. And then you're gonna need one of these containers, the one with this specific lid. You can find these at Dollar Tree. And you need a terracotta pot. I got mine from Hobby Lobby, and as you can see, they were $1.37. And then you're going to need some candy of your choice. I chose candy corn. Don't hate. I like candy corn. <laughs> the first part of the project is to spray paint these items black. And I'm going to be using Rust-Oleum's metallic paint. Okay, so what I can already tell you about this spray paint is it's going on okay, in my opinion. But it has like sparkly flecks in it, I guess, to make it look metallic, which for this project is not a bad thing, but I guess I was thinking it was just gonna be like shiny black. It's gonna be shiny, sparkly black. Now that the painting is done, we're gonna use E6000 to attach it all together. I would recommend taking off that little sticker that's on the bottom first. And then I applied the E6000 directly to the terracotta pot and I have a little key turn thing that kind of helps keep it from being wasted basically. <laughs> you just um, put glue all around the base. And you take that glass fishbowl thing and you put it on top and press down firmly. And that lid is not secure, just kind of rests on top. I first saw this project from one of my friends, Maria, and she's on TikTok. Her name is Brown Eye Mom. She did this project first and she actually used a sticker, but I just decided to use this wood cutout of a ghost and I traced it out and I cut it a little bit smaller than the actual wood ghost cutout size <laughs> and then I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna attach that to the front but using a sticker would be a whole heck of a lot easier and it would fit a little bit better too and now the fun part the candy you just add some candy and then you put the lid on and voila you are done this was my favorite project from today's video. I just absolutely adore it. And I just think it turned out so cute. And it was, again, another super easy project that anybody can make. And y'all, this project cost me less than $5 to make.
Thanks y'all so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate the company while I craft and create, and I hope you enjoyed this compilation video. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. Um, tell me if you liked that first DIY porch leaner that I made, and I want you to watch the rest of my outro because I have a special guest, and if you know who it is, let me know in the comments as well. And don't forget if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on Instagram or TikTok or something, it's Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life though. Because that's just creepy. It is. Bye. Bye.